Canva just dropped a tool that is going to transform the way that we teach and build online lessons and barely anybody is talking about it. Hey guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am sharing something brand new that is going to blow your minds because let's be honest, it's blown my mind. <laughs> Canva recently released a new AI powered tool called Canva Code. This allows users, specifically in this case educators, to generate interactive activities or experiences. Now, what does this look like? So instead of having to go and find the interactive tool, you can now create one yourself without having any coding experience whatsoever. This is a complete game changer and I am so excited to show you all the amazing things you can create with Canva code. So we'll begin on how to actually access Canva code. So you can see I'm just on Canva's website. You do need to have a Canva account, whether it is a free account or a premium account, both will work. Also, if you're a teacher, you get the premium account for free, which just makes this even better. So how you're going to start is you're just going to go log into Canva and then in the search bar now, you'll see it says right here, search or use AI. So we're just going to click on that directly and then we have these options down here at the bottom. So we are going to select code for me. A new page will appear and we have some options. So the first being we can either write an idea that we have to create some sort of interactive and it will code it for you completely or we can start with one of these templates at the bottom. So I think the best ones that I've seen so far in terms of the templates for education are the sorting activities, the historical timeline is great, the flashcards, the vocab matching game, memory game, all of these are great. So let's just click on the sorting one for now and you'll see when I click on it, it's going to generate a prompt. Now I can either just click let's generate this prompt or or you'll see I can actually where there's like quotes. So this is sorting animals. So mammals, reptiles, amphibians. Um, I can change these out. So if I want to do like biotic and abiotic factors, that could be another one. There's so many options. But let's just for the first example, let's click on the arrow and see what happens. Okay, so here it goes. It is going to start creating the code for the interactive. This will take some time. I'm going to kind of skip ahead so that that way you don't have to see the entire thing, but it's generating the code and developing the interactive activity for me. Okay, so it finally finished. It wrote almost 500 lines of code. I can review it on the right side. And then over here, so you'll see it says right here, version one. If I don't like how this works right now, I can actually ask it to change some things and it will update. Okay, so we'll click drag animals to the correct category. So one of the things I'm actually not seeing are any animals to drag and drop. So I am going to tell it that I don't see any animals to drag and drop into each category. So now, so it's going to fix the issue. Okay, so we can now look at version two here and you can see it changed it up a little bit. And now I have these animals that I can click and drag and yay, it works to the appropriate spot. So now that I've like looked at this, I'm going to select use this in a design and it's going to take me to like a regular Canva page to like test out this interactive even more. I can double click on it. And then of course, like we can click and drag them and you'll see it's still working, which is awesome. But now let's say I want to add this to my Canvas course. This is where the magic happens. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click publish this to the web. So we'll click publish and we can actually view the website. Okay, so we see the website. The next thing I'm going to do is I am actually going to place this into a Canvas page. So to do that, we're going to click share and then you can see the website is already live but we want to see all and we're going to click the embed option embed this 
we want the HTML embed code. So I'm just gonna click copy. And now we'll go to a canvas page. We're gonna do drag and drop. We're going to edit, go to the HTML editor, paste in that code, and then it is going to appear. And now I have that interactive directly in Canvas. So now students can open this, they can click and drag all of their animals to the appropriate spot. You'll notice if I, let's say elephant is a reptile, it says that it's wrong, not quite right. So then I would have to go again and there you go. So this is just awesome that we can create custom interactives now and place them directly into Canvas. So let's see a few more examples. The next example I'm going to show you is for vocabulary matching games. So we'll just select this one. We'll scroll up to the top and you'll see this prompt. Create an interactive vocabulary matching game where students connect terms with definitions. Start with the example math vocabulary set featuring six geometry terms with colorful design, hint system, and celebratory animations for correct matches. I'm going to get a little bit more specific here. So math vocabulary vocabulary featuring, let's do the following words, and we'll get rid of this, insert my vocabulary list that I have for my fifth grade math class. Let's just see what we can produce when we click the next button. Okay, so we have our math vocabulary matching game. So we can see here all of the terms and definitions. So let's make sure this one should go to decimal. Yay! Okay, this is so fun. I'm having too much fun here. So it works um, for the first version, which is great. So our prompt was awesome. So again, just following the same steps, we're going to click use and design. We're going to click publish this to the web. Da -da -da -da. Our website is now live. We'll go to share, go to embed, copy the code, go to canvas, go to our vocabulary matching, click edit, go to the HTML editor, and paste in the code and voila we have this interactive in Canvas. Again, mind-blowing. This time around, we customized this a little bit. We added our terms that we wanted, and now students can interact with this right here. These two should, yep, there you go. This new technology is just, it's so cool. Okay, so now in this example, I'm going to show you. We're not going to use any of these templates and then alter them. We're actually just going to write one ourselves, write our own prompt. So you can see that this prompt that I essentially wrote beforehand is very bare bones. So I basically said, create a word search interactive activity, use the following science vocabulary terms, and we're just going to run with it and see what it does. All right. And again, it's starting to generate a code to create this interactive. Okay. So it's done generating my word search. And from what I've just kind of initially looked at, these words are a bit cramped, um, but the functions seem to be working. So meaning I can like highlight a word and then it gets crossed out. So the functionality is working, but as we can see, this word search is just really cramped. So I'm going to ask it now to adjust the letters and maybe move the word key at the bottom. I wrote the letters within the puzzle need better spacing. Maybe move the list of words to the bottom of the puzzle so the puzzle letters can expand so they are not overlapping like they currently are. So let's see if this prompt helps adjust the placement and formatting here. The word search is now done. The spacing of the letters spot on perfect and we can see these words are now at the bottom of the page. So let's Let's just double check to make sure that the puzzle is still working. Okay, so here's chloroplast. Yay! Okay, so it's still working and then at the bottom chloroplast is crossed out. So yay, love that this works. So now we get to click use and design. And again, we're going to place this into Canvas. So we're going to publish this to the web, go through our two, three steps in Canva now. We'll click exit, share, and then see all embed. 
copy it to Canvas we go into the custom puzzle page that I've created. We're just gonna copy and paste that code in, save it, and then now we have our puzzle. Just make sure that it's working. Yay! It's good. I love it. It's awesome. The last example I'm gonna show you is way more custom than the last three. So the last interactive activity that I'm gonna create, I actually started in ChatGPT. So all I did was like write a prompt for a reading content page and basically attached the learning objectives and said create like an outline. And then ChatGPT essentially just did that for me. And so all I did was copy from ChatGPT the page outline. And now I am going to paste it directly in here. So you can see create the following page. And we're just gonna, this is probably gonna take a bit longer. So I'm just gonna click submit. And that is because it is very very detailed and there's probably going to be a lot of lines <laughs> required. So we'll just wait and see what it generates. Okay, so I'm actually like really impressed by this so far. So we have like this wonderful content page that includes like the learning objectives, the title, the essential question. I added this is a story that was created by AI. You can see this is like a really cool page design really really well and we have some of these like look it added a comprehension check so that like students can click and get immediate feedback which is really cool the only thing about these short answers that I am confused about where is that going so I'm really not sure if this text box entry is the best option in this scenario then we have matching evidences so they can click and drag them to the appropriate spot which is like this is really cool and then we have a reflection. So I think what I'm going to do is for version two, I'm going to change these text box so that it actually, instead of like having students write input here, I'm going to have them do it with like a journal entry instead, just because again, I don't know where they're submitting these to at this point. So let's change this up and then take another look at it. Okay, so it's done, but I just wanted to show you guys what I wrote. So I said, for all the tasks that involve entry text, change them to write in your journal. And it did it. So it all it did was change this little journal prompt section, which is awesome. And so everything else pretty much stayed the same. We still have those interactive answer check questions, but then um, we have like the journal section, which is, this is so cool. So we're going to use this in a design just to generate it again. We're going to, again, publish this to the web. Awesome. And then we'll share it, embed, create the embed code, copy the code. And now we are going to go back in to Canvas. So you can actually see here, this was the first one and it does have those entries so students can type in here but again where this is going I have no idea. And so for the other one here, we still have the content page so they can still go through this and then they have their little journal sections. This is much better. And how awesome does this look? The fact that we created this is just insane. We created something custom that is still interactive for students and they can do all their like little lesson checks. Let's make sure this one isn't working. There we go. One thing I have noticed is it does require you to like expand the page, but regardless of that being a thing, it is still right here in Canvas, which is awesome. And I'm sure as things, cause this is brand new. So as things are updating, I feel like these little kind of glitches will get resolved over time. The fact that we can create our own interactive activities in Canva copy a code, paste it into the HTML editor within Canvas. This is going to change teachers' lives. Now it's not just like searching for the right activity. We can now create the right activity for our students without having all of this context of how coding, HTML, JavaScript, all of this stuff works. We can just now tell AI to create it for us. I hope this got your wheels turning because Canva code opens up so many fun possible 
possibilities for you to incorporate into your Canvas course. All right, guys, I really hope that you have fun exploring with Canva code. If you come up with something super creative, feel free to share it in the comments below. I love it when you guys share stuff, and I think it also just helps us as educators learn new things, which is always fun. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.